morning. Christ is risen. Yeah, Easter's a season. We can say that for a long time. It is good to be with you this morning for our Jokes and Jammies Holy Humor Sunday worship service. Um, I think some of our friends are still at home in their jammies. Hopefully they're joining virtually. It is good to be in worship with you today. Uh, thanks to those who are helping with worship this morning. On the organ, we have Karen Kronitsky. Good to see you in your t-shirt. Thank you for participating. Organ yeah, pipes. Organ pipes on her t-shirt. Perfect. <laughs> Mine has an ordination vow on it, so I, I understand. Uh, our technical director this morning is Tom Graham. Our liturgist today is Becky Plymel, and our acolyte is Gabe Benish. The chancel flowers this morning were given with love by Kathleen and Mark Davis in memory of her mother, Evelyn McDevitt, and they're beautiful today. Uh, following worship today, we will have fellowship time downstairs, and also the kids have a new session of Sunday school beginning today. It's called Love God, Neighbor, and Enemy, and so all of the kids are invited down for that. Uh, we're still looking for a few teachers also to fill in some holes. If you are interested in teaching children Sunday school, there's a sign-up sheet on the deacon's table. You do need to have your clearances up to date, and so if you're not sure about that, uh, or know that you need to update your clearances, you can call the church office and we will walk you through that. This week on Tuesday is Adults Night Out, 5.30 p.m. at the Monroe Hotel. Uh, you can let Diane know today if you're coming. Uh, if you didn't RSVP by the date, that's okay. Uh, it's always good to have more people around the table. So all adults are invited Tuesday at 5.30. And next Sunday, is uh, yarn group will be meeting and so if you knit or crochet or do anything with yarn feel free to bring your supplies and join in following worship there are lots of other things coming up the garden club is uh, resuming for the spring and they'll be meeting on april 24th at one o'clock weather permitting i'm assuming uh, to do some light weeding and, and sprucing up around the church yard if you would like to participate in that, you can talk to Pete McElhaney. Many hands make light work, and uh, bring your tools also. And then two Sundays from today, the deacons will be hosting a fifth Sunday luncheon following worship. The menu is baked potatoes and walking tacos. So it's gonna be good, and I won't be here. I'm sad I'm gonna miss it. But you all can eat for me. Uh, and so that is two weeks from today, April 30th, all are invited to stay for lunch. The next intergenerational event is called Pizza and Painting, um, in which we will eat pizza and paint things. Um, the participants will work on two projects. One is a big uh, project for the church, and another is one to take home. Um, there's a sign-up sheet also on the deacon's table for that. The part participation has to be limited to 20 people because of the particular projects. So if you are interested in that, please sign up. And then book club is meeting a uh, week early, again in May, on May 7th. And the, sh the book is called Al Capone Does My Shirts by Jennifer Choldenko. Um, and if you have questions about the book, you can talk to Barb. I haven't read it, but it sounds really good. Uh, other things that are happening, Christian education would like your input on adult education. So if you haven't filled out the survey yet, there's some available on the bulletin board. Willing workers are looking for postcards or scenic pictures for a project they will be doing in June. And they need a lot of them. So if you have any to spare, you can give them to Nancy Llewellyn by May 1st. Anything to add, Nancy? We just need more. All right, and um, if you are an artist, or if you like to you know, think you are an artist, we are updating the art around the church, and we would love to have local, meaning congregational members, contribute to these art pieces. So if you paint, if you do woodwork, if you do needlework, um, any kind of something that we can display, if you're interested in that, please talk to me and I would be glad to give you more information. Are there any other announcements to share this morning? Hearing none, then let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
Please rise in body or spirit and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. People of God, sing praise. Give thanks to God's holy name. God has turned our mourning into joyful song and dance. God has taken away our funeral clothes and clothed us with joy instead. May we sing with abandon and may our praises never be silent. Let us join together in our unison opening prayer. Holy God, as you have taken what we would call an absurdity and turned it into possibility, as you have coaxed us to sing springtime alleluias where once there was a gray dawn, as you have called us out of the tombs we inhabit into an undreamed of tomorrow, we praise you for this day. Come, risen Christ, in newness and hope on this Eastertide day. Amen.
None of us likes to look foolish, but which is sillier? Chasing after the world and all its gaudy trinkets, which flatter our egos, or being a fool for Christ? Imitating him in service to others and offering ourselves in love and joy for the world. In this time of confession, let us admit to God the foolish choices we make each and every day, preparing to receive God's joyful grace. Let us pray together. Merciful God, you know better than we do what important people we believe we are. Thinking we have to be serious all the time, we miss out on the joy of your creation. Choosing to feast on the pain of the world, we skip the picnic offered in paradise. Forgive us heart of joy and make us open to the startling upside down ways in which you work. Fill us with Easter's laughter, with your healing joy, and with the love poured into us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hear this prayer, O God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now. Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You all hear the birds? I love it. It's so wonderful. It brings me joy. The Gospels tell us over and over again of the joy which comes through Christ. When Jesus was around, lives were changed. The sick were healed. The sorrowful began to laugh with joy. The good news is that this joy is ours, too. Through the Holy Spirit, we are gifted with joy, and through Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now take a moment to share the peace and the joy of Jesus Christ with one another. Those of you here in person, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well. throwing Tom for a loop today using the handheld mic. Uh, if we have any of our younger friends at home, you're invited a little closer. And hello. Oh, you all look so nice in your jammies. I love it. Some of these people out here, they must be real fancy when they sleep. Like, look at, look at Mr. Mark. He's wearing a tie. That doesn't seem comfortable for sleeping, does it? And shoes. And shoes. Oh, well, I don't even like to wear shoes anywhere. You don't want to get blisters. That's right. <laughs> Do you know why we're being silly today in church? Why we're wearing jammies and laughing? Jokes and jammies, yeah. Do you know why? Why we do that? <sighs> Other than it's fun. So um, for a long... Were you going to say something? Because it's fun. Yeah, why not? Church should be fun. For a long time, churches after Easter, for like a whole week, would have parties and picnics and they'd tell jokes and sometimes they'd like play jokes on one another and the sunday after easter which is today in the church would be they called it things like bright sunday or laughter sunday and they continued the celebration of easter so this is actually a very ancient tradition maybe not the jammies part but the jokes part for sure so um i have in here in this basket some jokes okay so, you each want to draw, I don't know, draw, draw three to start. Three. Okay, that makes sense. 
Yeah, one. One, two, three. All right. Three. Yeah, because paper is basically Got it. There you go. just a dead pool of holes. Mm, that's true. Okay, who wants to read one first? I guess I'll read one. I guess you will, Jackson. Of course you will, buddy. Okay. Why is Abraham the smartest person in the Bible? I don't know. Why? He knew a lot. <laughs> Good. Now, it might not be funny to you, but see, everybody out there, because there was a guy named Lot in the Bible. Who wants to go next? Anna? What is a dentist, dentist's favorite hymn? Crown with him many crowns. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read Gabe's. Ooh, this, some of you will like this. What do they call pastors in Germany? German shepherds. <laughs> what did Abraham... Wait, what did Adam say when he was asked his favorite holiday? It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> Why is Adam considered the fastest person in the Bible? He, he came first in the human race. We're just, we have an Adam theme right now. What, what did Adam say to Eve when handing her something to wear? What? Take it or leave it. <laughs> when someone needed a boat, what did the people in the town say? We know a guy. What kind of car would what kind of car would Jesus drive? A Chry Chrysler. 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 <laughs> that was more for the grown-ups, yeah. All right. Oh, and this this one was all about vehicles. What do you call a Bible character who just pulled into church? What? A parking lot. <laughs> Lots getting his time today, huh? Okay, so some of these were funny, some maybe not so much, huh? But it's fun to tell jokes, right? So this week, as the weather, well, especially today, as the weather is beautiful, I want you to remember that God doesn't want us to be sad all the time. Sometimes we, we have to be sad, right? Yeah. But God really wants us to be happy and to enjoy life. God created all these beautiful things. God created soft jammies. God created beautiful flowers and sunshine. God created laughter and joy. So I really want you to try to remember those things this week, okay? Laughter and joy and celebrating everything God has created, okay? So we're going to pray, but then in a minute, I have a few more. These are longer jokes. One, two, three, four, five. So hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. What I want you to do, hold on. What I want you to do after we're done praying, so I'm going to give everybody a couple, and I want you to look out at everybody here and find the people who look look the funniest I don't mean that they're funny looking but they look like they could tell a good joke okay and then give it to them and hopefully they will tell the joke later all right okay can we pray repeat after me thank you God, thank you, God. for jokes and jammies and most of all for Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ. Help, us help us to share the joy of his resurrection with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, God, the grace to see ourselves as you see us, your creation wholly loved. In this time, awaken us to your presence in the sights and sounds around us. Shape our hearts to delight in the gifts of your word and in the joy it brings. Amen. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 8, verses 1 through 5 from the Common English Bible. This is a song of praise for the majesty of God's creation. Listen now for God's word to us. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven. You, from the mouths of nursing babies, you have laid a strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies. When I, look up at you, at, when I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. And our second reading today comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, from the New Revised Standard Version. This is a reminder that everything has its own season. Listen now for God's word to us. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a gift. <laughs> you are, thank you so much. I mean, you put Mr. Rogers in anything and we're all going to smile. Our epistle reading today comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25 from the Inclusive Bible. And here Paul talks about the foolishness of the cross. Listen again for God's word to us. For the message of the cross is complete absurdity to those who are headed for ruin. But to us who are experiencing salvation, it is the power of God. Scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and thwart the learning of the learned. Where are the wise? Where are the scholars? Where are the philosophers of this age? Has God has not God turned the wisdom of this world into folly? If it was God's wisdom that the world in its wisdom would not know God, it was because God wanted to save those who have faith through the foolishness of the message we preach. For while the Jews call for miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here we are preaching a Messiah nailed to a cross. To the Jews, this is an obstacle they cannot get over. And to the Greeks, this is madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Knock, knock. Let us, let us pray. <laughs> Risen Lord, grant us joyful hearts and holy senses of humor. Help us to be in this moment only, looking neither to the past with regret nor to the future with apprehension. Speak to us now through joy and laughter, and may the words of my mouth and the jokes that are shared here and the meditations of all of us together be acceptable to you, God of joy and laughter. Amen. It was Easter Sunday. Becky and Travis Smith were hosting the big Easter dinner. It seemed like everyone had accepted their invitations. Their parents, their siblings, aunts and uncles and cousins, nieces and nephews, and even a few co-workers and neighborhood friends. For Travis and Becky, Holy Week was spent not preparing for the death of Jesus, but for this meal. For days, they cleaned and shopped and decorated. They saw the Easter morning sunrise not to greet the risen Christ, but to begin the hours of cooking and baking ahead of them, interrupted by a brief stop by the church for worship. Finally, after the guests had arrived and the food was prepared, they all sat down around the dining room table, card tables and TV trays, on folding chairs, couches, and even the floor. Exhausted, Becky turned to her six-year-old daughter, Grace, and asked if she would say the blessing for the meal. I don't know what to say, Grace shyly responded. Hungry and tired, Travis said to his little girl, just say what you hear mommy say. <laughs> so Grace bowed her head, and everyone else followed suit. And after a moment of silence, she began to pray. Dear God, why on earth did I invite all these people over for dinner? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Today is our second annual Jokes and Jammies Sunday here at Hill, but like I said with the kids, the tradition of continuing the celebration of the resurrection in the days following Easter is much, much older. The practice of celebrating Bright Sunday or Laughter Sunday or Holy Humor Sunday finds its roots in the musings of 4th and 5th century theologians like St. Augustine, Gregory of Nyssa, and John Chrysostom. Early Christians 
claimed that God played a practical joke on the devil by raising Jesus from the dead. And they called it the Easter laugh. The week following Easter was observed as days of joy and laughter, with parties, picnics, jokes, and even pranks to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And to cap off the week, the Sunday after Easter, today, has long been observed as a day of joyful worship. This is not a tradition of frivolity, irreverence, or offensiveness. Holy Humor Sunday is a reminder that life in Christ does not have to be somber all the time. It's a reminder that there is joy, pure joy, in being a child of God. It reminds us not to take ourselves so seriously. G.K. Chesterton once said that angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Holy Humor Sunday honors the rich tradition of humor. While it had been a favored tradition for centuries, Laughter Sunday, Bright Sunday, eventually waned in popularity. In the 17th century, Pope Clement X prohibited the practice because people were having too much fun. And the increased focus on religious and territorial wars in a post-Reformation Europe sort of sealed the deal. The eastern branches of the Christian church continued to celebrate Bright Sunday, but the Western Church did not see a resurgence of this practice until the late 1980s, when a group who called themselves the Fellowship of Mary Christians encouraged churches and prayer groups to resurrect, pun fully intended, the tradition. In just the past few decades, churches and faith groups all over have joyfully adopted jokes and laughter, and for good reason. As Becky read, Ecclesiastes says that there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. Martin Luther said that you have as much laughter as you have faith. Father of our tradition, John Calvin, said that we are nowhere forbidden to laugh. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, said that a sour religion is the devil's religion. G.K. Chesterton said that a good joke is the closest thing we have to divine revelation. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that ultimate seriousness is not without a dose of humor. And one of the greatest theologians of all time, Charles Schultz, said that humor is proof that everything is going to be all right with God nevertheless. So let us laugh. At this time, you are invited, if you have jokes, I know some of you do, uh, to share them or funny stories. For those who are joining virtually, if you have something you'd like to share, you can put it in the chat. You can text me. My dad texted me one earlier, which is not church appropriate, but hilarious. Uh, So they have to be church appropriate. Um, So if you're joining virtually, you can send it to me in a variety of ways. And for those of you who are here, Greg's going to come around with the mic and you can share, you can just wave him down, and let us continue the tradition of laughter in the church together. Oh, okay. This is the joke that Jackson gave me. Our fourth grader celebrated his birthday on crutches, so he couldn't carry the cupcakes into school without help. I asked our sixth grader, Noah, to help his brother carry them in. I could, he said, but I'd prefer not to. Spotting a teaching moment, my husband asked Noah, what would Jesus do? Noah answered, Jesus would heal him so he could carry in his own cupcakes. (laughs) Indeed. What do a tick and the Eiffel Tower have in common? I don't know what. They're both parasites. The heists are bringing it right now. I like this. What breed of dog can jump higher than buildings? What? Any dogs can, because buildings can't jump. Hmm. That one was a thinker. Well, first I want to thank Gabe for 
picking me and also his capable assistant, Barb Graham. So thanks a lot. <laughs> so a priest buys a lawnmower at a yard sale. Back home, he pulls on the starter rope a few times with no results. He storms back to the yard sale and tells the previous owner, I can't get the mower to start. That's because you have to curse to get it started, said the man. I'm a man of the cloth. I don't even remember how to curse. You keep pulling on that rope and it'll come back to you. <laughs> can I, I found a few this morning when we, I knew, can I tell a couple? Yes, please. Quick? So there was a young girl and she'd never been to a wedding before and she was very excited about going so she asked her mother a few questions about it and learned some terminology, you know, groom and bride and vows and things like that. And so she went to the wedding and she was sitting there uh, and all of a sudden she said to her mother, she said, why, why is the bride dressed in white? And, and the mother said, well, white is a happy color and this is the happiest day of the bride's life. And the little girl thought for a minute and she said, well, is that why the groom's dressed in black? <laughs> and the other one is um, another couple was thinking about getting married and they um, were having a lot of discussion about different things that were going on and they were having trouble with one particular thing, who was going to make the coffee in the morning. And so she being the good Christian woman that she was, she said, I'm going to read the Bible and see what it says in there. And the next day she said to him, you have to make the coffee, and he said, well, why is that? And she said, well, it says right in the Bible, Hebrews. <laughs> I know they're kind of corny. <laughs> you know, Marsh, I think you and I have the same source, because now a couple of you are off the hook, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the joke I got courtesy Anna. A Christian guy named Bill saw an ad online for a Christian horse. So he went to check it out. The horse's owner said, it's easy to ride him. Just say, praise the Lord to make him go, and amen to make him stop. So Bill got on the horse and said, praise the Lord. Sure enough, the horse started to walk. Praise the Lord, he said again, and the horse began to trot. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, he yelled, and the horse began to gallop. Bill was enjoying his ride so much that he almost didn't notice the cliff that he and the horse were about to go over. And Bill shouted, Amen, at the top of his lungs, and the horse stopped right at the edge of the cliff. Relieved, Bill said, Phew, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, sorry. How do you make a fire with two sticks? Make sure one is a match. That's how I make fires, that's for sure. What's the difference between a well-dressed man on a unicycle and a poorly dressed man on a bicycle? A tire. Aww. <laughs> this one's a long one. A minister parked his car in a no parking zone in a large city because he was short, on t short of time and couldn't find a space with a meter. Then he put a note under the windshield wiper that read, I have circled the block 10 times. If I don't park here, I'll miss my appointment. Forgive us our trespasses. When he returned, he found a citation from a police officer under, or along with his note that said, I've circled this block for 10 years. If I don't give you a ticket, I'll lose my job. Lead us not into temptation. <laughs> what concert costs just 45 cents? 50 cents fit featuring Nickelback. Mm. Yeah, that's, for, that's for the younger crowd, thinks so. <laughs> What's the difference between, how can you tell the difference between a tree and a dog? How? Their bark. Ah, very nice. All right, while Greg's making his way over, um, what animal could Noah not trust? The cheetah. Where does a rainbow go when it commits a crime? Where? A prism. Oh. But don't worry, it's just a light sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Science jokes for the win. 
If you've got one, wave them down. I know Barb's got one, right? Or is Marsh took yours? Well, there you go. What did Jonah's family say when they told him about God's call to Nineveh? Mmm, sounds fishy. During a Sunday school lesson, a child learned about how God created human beings. The child became especially focused when the teacher explained how Eve was created from Adam's ribs. Later in the week, the boy's mother saw him lying down on the floor, so she asked him what was wrong. His reply was priceless. Mom, I have a pain in my side. I think I'm getting a wife. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be sorry. You told me to bring no, it. No, I told, I told Dave to come prepared. I'm excited for this. <laughs> and, and Ellen, too. We had a little talk. Uh, I thought we'd try a little education this morning since Karen's on the education committee. Uh, we all learned about uh, Boaz and Ruth. But did you know that uh, before Boaz met Ruth, he was ruthless? <laughs> <laughs> did you hear about the lady that passed gas while in church? <gasps> she had to sit in her own pew. <laughs> Do you, do you know what they call a, uh, or did you know that they call a sleeping nun a Roman Catholic? Oh. <laughs> Didn't say they were all going to be good. The best thing you can do for a dog with a fever is put mustard on it. Everybody knows that mustard makes a hot dog better. <laughs> Why are dogs good dancers? They have two left feet. Oh. <laughs> I, I used to be addicted to the hokey pokey. Church is a good place for confession, but I turned myself around. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a chicken rolling in the dirt. He gets up, he crosses the road, rolls around in the dirt over there, comes back, crosses back. He's called a dirty double crosser. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, while Greg's walking back there, why did Adam and Eve do math every day? Because they were told to be fruitful and multiply. You can groan, too. It's okay if I joke. What kind of lizard makes people laugh? A stand-up chameleon. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. What did Moses say when he saw the people worshiping the golden calf? Holy cow! So I was, uh, I had divorced my husband, Dick, and I was getting married for the second time. This is a true story. So I'm standing up there, my sister's sitting in the pew with her children. My niece was about four and a half. She looks up at my sister and says, where's Uncle Dick? Oh. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> yeah, funny now, yeah. What do pirates call Noah's boat? The Ark. <laughs> what, Bible, what Bible character was super fit? Absalom. Very good. Very good. I think we have the same source, too. <laughs> Why did the kid throw the butter out the window? He went to see a butterfly. Mm. Why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing, in case they get a hole in one? What do you call an illegally parked frog? Toad. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have one that's just, they're burning to tell? No, okay. Thank you, thank you. Oh, one more. Seth's on a roll today. How do, you follow, how do you follow Will Smith in the snow? You follow the fresh prince. Oh. Oh, man, very nice. Okay, um, so thank you for sharing all your, I have more, but we'll, we'll save them for another time. So to conclude this morning, to conclude my message, I want to bring you a very special message from a unique religious order. 
the order of the silent monks of South Kitsap are housed within South Kitsap High School in Port Orchard, Washington. It's weird to have a monastery and a high school, but it happens. So secretive are these monks that they are rarely seen in public, neither leaving their secluded monastery nor allowing themselves to be recorded. This fraternal order has taken a vow of silence as a sign of their devotion, but the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So they have come up with a creative solution to this theological dilemma. And we are extremely fortunate to have received a video of their offering of praise. So I invite you to turn your attention to the gospel according to the order of the silent monks of South Kitsap High School. Be to God. <laughs> Amen. In an attempt to be welcoming, Faith Temple Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, once put up a sign that said, We welcome all denominations one, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. 
We offer our gifts, financial and otherwise, to God, not out of compulsion, but out of our sincere gratitude and joy for God's presence in our lives. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you are invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances, drop them off during the week, mail them to the church, or give electronically. Please rise in body or spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. God of laughter and joy, grant us joyful hearts and holy senses of humor. Give us the gift of faith to be renewed and shared with others each day. Teach us to live in this moment looking neither to the past with regret nor to the future with apprehension. Let love be our guide and our lives a grateful prayer. Amen. remain risen as we join together in our responsive affirmation of faith written specifically for Holy Humor Sunday. Let us confess the faith of the church. We believe in God the creator who made us in the divine image. We live, we love, and we laugh because we are like God. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. He had the last laugh on evil when he rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, source of holy wisdom and joy. Filled with the Spirit, we are empowered to proclaim the good news. We believe in the triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Mysteriously united and seemingly foolish, we embrace this relationship of love. Amen. Please be seated. We come together to share our joys and our concerns. In the midst of laughter, it is important to remember that there are people who are suffering, suffering and who are struggling this day. We continue to pray for Matt Street, Carolyn Street's son. He had a successful open heart surgery this week, so thanks be to God for that. And she says thank you for all of the prayers and asks for continued prayers for a successful recovery for him. Uh, I also ask for prayers for David's aunt, Janice, who had a fall and she broke her leg and shattered her shoulder uh, and had to have surgery for that. She's almost 80 years old, and so um, she's got a long road of recovery for her. So prayers for Janice. We also, of course, pray for all those that we love who are living with cancer. We pray for those who are living with chronic health conditions. We lift up those who uh, find it difficult to find joy in these days. And we pray for all who are trying to share that love and joy with others. Are there other joys or concerns to share this morning? Dick, hold on just a second. Greg, Greg is really getting a workout today. On? Yeah, oh, it is okay. Um, I like healing in my uh, two knees, arthritis in my knees, and um, healing in my um, right heel, the plantar fasciitis. And I like to um, lose 100 pounds uh, health, healthily, 100 pounds. Um, that's all in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dick. So we uh, pray for Dick for healing in his knees and his foot, and also for weight loss and healthy choices, which I think is probably a prayer for uh, many of us. So. Yes, we will pray for that. Thank you. Other joys or concerns this morning? I 
I just wanted to share a joy that um, my family actually did get together last weekend. Everybody made it and had a wonderful time. So it was a beautiful Easter. And today we have another celebration, which kind of goes along with today. So, <laughs> yay. It is it always, it's always a joy to be able to get together and see family, especially when there are so many issues that complicate gathering together. So we celebrate with you and with all of those who hopefully were not like Becky and Travis and saying, dear Lord, why did I invite all these people over for dinner? But that it was joyful. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, Any other joys or concerns this morning? All right, let us turn to God in prayer. Imaginative God, you smiled and the sun burst through the shadows of chaos. You chuckled and the platypus splashed in creation's fountain. You giggled and all that is good and beautiful was given shape by you. Laughing at the feeble attempts of the evil one, you showed us how to resist temptation. Howling with laughter at death's foolish belief that the tomb could hold you, you burst forth into the kingdom as the stars peeled with joy. Spirit of Easter, as you fill us with new life, may we delight in sharing it with others. As you tell us of the good news which can never be taken from us, may we rejoice in offering it to the broken, the sad, and the lonely. As you tickle us with grace, May we give it away with laughter on our lips and joy in our hearts. God, we pray for those who have a difficult time finding joy today. We remember those who are ill. We pray for those who are preparing for surgery or who are recovering from surgery. We pray for those facing difficult, life-altering decisions. We pray for those who are striving to make healthier choices. And we thank you for joy, for sunshine and flowers, and laughter and a family of faith in which we can celebrate together. God, in community, holy in one, our hearts overflow with wonder. Hear us now as we say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise, embody your spirit as we sing our closing song. We were having so much fun with jokes, I didn't even pay attention to the time. So we're running over, but you're going to get to sing a Christmas carol now. So um, I always hear complaints during Advent. So this is to the tune of Angels from the Realms of Glory. Please rise and let us sing together. <laughs>
Did you know that Spider-Man had a winter coat made completely of Mediterranean flatbread? It was a Peter Parker. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. <laughs> As you go today, go down to fellowship hour. Maybe there's some pita down there. Who knows? May the God of surprises bring you smiles and joy in the everyday and the ordinary. May the God of love be seen in all we say and do. Go forth rejoicing, for Christ is still risen. He is risen indeed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Alleluia. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.